are gonna get crazy! <laughs> Most everyone's mad here. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast. How are you all doing, folks? Have you been doing well? Have you been spending a good weekend considering that it was Father's Day? Hopefully you all had a nice time. I know how I had a crazy family reunion. Uh, much bigger plans than I expected for something like Father's Day. But anyways, we're not here to talk about our weekend. We are here to go and put on a show with Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast. And this is going to be one heck of a show, by the way, because I'm not going to be alone for this one. I yeah! actually... Oh, yeah, I already hear the excitement. Thank you, Cinemageddon, for the uh, subscription there. Uh, but yes, I do have a special guest star with me. Uh, this is someone who actually did ask me to come on board if they wanted to be uh, a guest for the show. And I figured, why the fridge not? Because we've had fun times the last times that he was here. So let's bring him back one more time, or at least again. So please welcome back, everyone. Logan, a.k.a. Toucan LDM. Logan, what's up, dude? Dude. it's me hi i'm the guy it's me <laughs> but no yeah thank you for having me aboard again and you know it's it's funny the reason why i originally asked you in the first place for this week is because i thought you're going to be talking about that new disney short that's going to play in front of wish but then i realized that was they released that news on that sunday and i thought to myself Ah oh, no, I missed out on that chance to talk about it. But hey, I'm I'm just happy to be here again, talk about these other mm -hmm. news. So thank you for having me on board again. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I mean, like with some like I, you understand, I'm a major Disney fan myself. So I mean, when I saw something like Once Upon a Studio talking about that big Disney crossover, it's like I gotta talk about this. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't blame you. I I am like hyped for that short too because. Yeah, really quick on my thoughts. I'm always a sucker with crossovers, but for this one, I've been a huge fan of Walt Disney Animation Studios, and this feels like it's going to be like something really special. And so, yeah, I will i won't keep this long, but in short, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Oh, I, I, I'm excited as well. I've already expressed my thoughts on the whole thing, but yeah, I can't wait to go and see it. I'm already excited for Wish as is, but like now with the addition of What's Same Upon here. the Studio, I definitely got uh, some major hype for that. But also, before we go and do begin, however, considering that we are still in the month of June, we are still in Pride Month, so there is another charity highlight that I would like to go and do. And for this week, I will be talking about the human rights campaign so you may probably know about the human rights campaign one of the biggest nonprofit organizations that specializes in uh, human rights or primarily with the lgbtq plus community and especially with uh, how nowadays there seems to be a massive war with uh, a lot of lawmakers uh taking away the rights of the lgbtq plus community especially when it comes to the t of that uh, which are, which are trans people uh, sadly like we need like all the help we can get and especially with a major organization like the human rights campaign and not to mention that they do help out in several other uh, causes as well that are related to human rights so rather it be uh, not just for the LGBTQ plus community but also for um, for the rights of people of color for women's rights for um, uh, other rights for religious minorities such as uh, Jews and Muslims and many many more uh, the human uh, the human rights campaign is there to go and help out so that everyone can have equal rights. And um, if you want to go and uh, give your donation to the human rights campaign, then all you have to do is go to hrc.org. And uh, whatever money they get, they'll uh, greatly uh, appreciate it. So that's just a, a quick highlight that I would like to go and do for this week. <laughs> All right, so uh, with that said and done now, I would like to go and ask you, Logan, are you ready for today's episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast? Oh, you know it. 
Oh, good, good, good. All right. Chavwal, are you ready for today's episode? Now, let me hear it, folks. Are you all prepared for this? Oh, uh, let's see. Yes, yes. Oh, I see people are prepared. People are ready. Yes. Perfect. And now, with all that said and done, I believe it is time that we shall go and get things started. And with our whoop, first whoop. story, and uh, actually, before I go and uh, talk about what we have here, I would like to mention that this is a little bit of a special episode, as many, if not all of these stories, are actually highlights to what happened at this year's Annecy International Animation Film Festival. And there have been a whole... <clears throat> oh, excuse me, folks. Uh, there have been a whole lot of announcements that have occurred, uh, ranging from a variety of studios, all showing many of their big upcoming projects that they have in store. And with this one in particular, this is actually just a little taste of what will be to come, but this is just a, a teaser for an upcoming animated feature. And like we've only like we only talked about it a little bit when uh when we were having our big D20 three special do you remember that logan i do remember that i vaguely remember we talked about about that specific movie but i'm sure like now that the teaser trailer is released we can talk more about in depth so far but yeah that's not uh, the most i can remember about that this specific movie yeah i think it was i think it's safe to say that it's not necessarily the biggest highlight uh, that happened at that D23, but now that we do have uh, our first taste of it, now we could be a bit more familiar. So with that said, let's go and start things off by looking at the teaser trailer for the upcoming Pixar movie, Elio. No, uh, just a me thing. Everyone was shocked. <laughs> And that is Elio, to which it will be coming out to theaters on, uh, I do believe, uh, in March of 2024. Or at least the teaser trailer is saying that it's coming out this spring. So, Logan, I would like to know your opinion on what we have just witnessed. Um, So far, from what I'm seeing out of this trailer, it looks cute. Cute so far. Um, I definitely see like the potential because now like how often, I mean, besides Lightyear, how often does Pixar do like sci-fi stuff? Um, looking back, it's honestly very rare. Like there was Wally that one time and, uh, I oh, think yeah, I guess, that may be it. Yeah. I guess Wally is classified as like sci-fi if you think about it. But mm -hmm. anyways, in regards to this trailer, um, I, not gonna lie, not the best impression so far. I mean, granted, it is a teaser trailer, but I'm sure, like, once the actual trailer is released, I'm sure we'll, we'll get more out of it. But I mean, it, it does look very promising as something that's like really original. And I mean, the humor so far not really selling me. I mean, uh, Earth, I feel like they could have done a better job than that. I will say I did like that one bit of the kid like taking the photo of the alien. Because honestly, if I was in that situation, I would have done the same thing as well. I'll just look at it and just click it, click the photo. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it d it does look really like I'm sure it's going to be like very creative and all that stuff. I'm guessing they're going to go with a lot of reveal expert, which I'm not sure how well that part's going to be executed. I mean, granted, um, I'm not gonna lie. Like one of my personal favorite Pixar movies is A Bug's Life, and even and they also did the live review. But I don't know. I feel like they did that one all right in Bug's Life here, with especially with now that like every anime movie, like lately, in the past like couple of years, have done like the live review trope. I, I'm not sure how it could be cliche. Maybe they'll do something different with it. But I mean, I want to be optimistic about this movie because it is definitely more original compared to like everything else that's out there from when it comes to, like uh Pixar lately. I mean yeah granted Elemental is also original, but I know people are like saying that's like very formulaic as like a Pixar movie, which I'm sure we'll talk more about that later. Mm -hmm. But but I mean so far I'm I mean like I said, not a great first impression, but I'm sure like once the tra the fit official trailers are released, then I'm sure my opinion could change. But that's what I got. 
interesting honestly there are some things that i both agree and disagree with you with because i'll just have my big criticism out of the way yeah my, what, what could possibly be my biggest turn off from what we've seen in this trailer is that it looks like it's going to adopt the liars reveal trope i mean like we've already went through it so many times and especially for someone like me who has who has gone through like hundreds of animated features i've seen that liars reveal trope done so like it's been done again and again and again to the point that it just becomes tiring and it starts to feel like they're just repeating the same thing. And even in here, uh, it, it, it doesn't give out any promise in terms of the story itself. But with that said, though, everything else that I've seen in this teaser trailer, I honestly really love. Like, probably my favorite thing is in regards to the animation. I feel like in here, like, it is just awe inspiring especially when you see like uh, all the different planets when you see um like like just the, the setting that the kid enters into like it's just a, a very lovely looking place and especially the way that they would play with the organic sci-fi theme and not to mention like the the variety of different aliens that you see featured here like it, it, it's another thing that's just so mesmerizing it's so colorful it's so creative i feel like already the animation sold on me it's like this is gonna be a fantastic looking pixar film where like you could tell they're gonna really emphasize on the creative aspect where the designs are gonna be like one of the biggest highlights and one of the most beloved things that's gonna come from this movie especially when they have like numerous of different kinds of aliens and like the the unique architecture that is uh in their surroundings it's like i think this is gonna be a fantastic looking movie and something that is just gonna be so awe-inspiring just to look at the whole way through and i would say the big thing that i do disagree with you with uh on logan has to be in regards to the humor i actually do like the comedy in this like okay yeah sure not everything lands well but i will say like some of the some of the other gags especially coming from the aliens are actually pretty funny like um i do like the goodbye that they go that they do like like as you say on earth okay bye i love you and everybody is just repeating that and then of course like we got the last bit like with the threat with the giant threatening alien that ate his mother, who was voiced by Brad Garrett, which um I, I think it has been confirmed that was Brad Garrett. That part uh gave me a good laugh the first time that I saw it. So honestly, I would say maybe more than you, uh, it definitely gave me a good first impression where I don't think it's going to be perfect, but I love the animation that they are presenting. And the comedy uh did help me get pretty engaged with it and i feel like okay it's not may like chances are it may not be pixar's next big masterpiece but i got a feeling this could be somewhere in the range like at best it's going to be in the range of turning red where this is going to be a pixar film that will emphasize a bit more on the comedy and not to mention even the animation like the design of the characters do look a, a bit similar so for me i would say yeah, I'm definitely excited for this one. I love what they're they're presenting in the trailer. And yeah, honestly, I would just like you though, I would love to see more of what they will have in the full trailer, which maybe we're not gonna get until like in the fall or maybe around the same time as Wish. But still though, I, I would love to see a bit more if it can convince me that there's gonna be more to the story than just the liar reveal trope. Yeah, and that's another thing too. I gotta agree with you. It's like the animation style is definitely something I love about like Pixar. Or like when it comes to like the more later films, recent films, it's like how distinctive of an art style they have for each of their films. Like Soul looks different compared to Luca. Luca, mm -hmm. Luca, Luca looks different compared to Turning Red, and I really do appreciate like like they're they're going like a different route when it comes to like the character designs. Mm -hmm. Like I, I really enjoy turning red, especially like the way they execute like the animation, whereas like it's very like uh Japanese at certain points, whereas like it's not like oh when it comes to like the over top expressions and all that stuff. I know some people don't really like the animation in that movie, but I personally love it. Mm -hmm. It's definitely different for a Pixar movie. And yeah, with same with this one. The most I noticed is like the character designs are like more cartoony compared to like mm -hmm. the characters you see in like in Toy Story and stuff oh, like yeah. that. But yeah, I mean, at this point, we're talking about Pixar. 
the animation is going to be good no matter what. I'll be surprised if there's a move, a Pixar movie where the animation, like, well, I wouldn't say sucks, but it won't be as impressive. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, you can say about that with, like, the original Toy Story, but come on. That was, like, the first ever animated, uh, computer animated movie yeah, ever, ever but made. But, I mean, like, whatever so. they would put <laughs> new that is, like, at the time, it's all, it, it has always been amazing. Yeah, and I feel like that holds up way better compared to the other CGI stuff back in the 90s. But but yeah, in, the, in regards to this movie, yeah, um, like I said, like, I definitely want to see more out of this trailer just to get like a better idea. I mean, for a first impression, it's definitely looking great so far. But I'm just not like, I'm not just there yet. I'm sure mm-hmm. I'll enjoy it once it's a release. So. And um, going back to you said about like the Brad Garrett alien, that joke kind of reminds me of the joke they did in Moana with uh, Tamatoa. Like, oh, you know, like, right. oh, like, I ate yeah, my grandma. Like, <laughs> I ate my grandma. Yeah, that bit. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, but, I do recall that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, but I, but, I do get no. what you mean. And honestly, it's fair that, like, you want to see a bit more. And, like, I mean, again, this is just a teaser trailer. That's just going to give you a little mm-hmm. bit of a taste. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot more that's going to come later. But, yeah, I mean, like, I understand your perspective on it. But for me, I would say, like, already uh i'm probably the more optimistic about this one because like the co- like for me the comedy really did get uh get me engaged and uh, like i'm just so mesmerized again by the animation so already it's uh selling me pretty well and already i'm gonna be putting this among uh one of my more anticipated movies that'll come in uh, 2024 yeah don't yeah lo- yeah i'm definitely optimistic about this too don't get me wrong so it's just what i've seen so far yeah, uh, of course, of course. Don't worry, there will I be will say more th- to come. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this. I'm hoping this will be better than Lightyear. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I do like Lightyear, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll hopefully I know I will. mentioned this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know on. we talked about this before, that you like Lightyear, but I'm sorry. I did not like that movie whatsoever. But uh, that's a different story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not here to talk about Lightyear. We're here to talk about Elio. Uh, yeah, but I think it'll definitely... Um, I, I think it will definitely get a lot more appeal, and I think it'll definitely win more hearts than Lightyear. Safe to say. All right, For so... Sure, yeah. Uh, with that said, though, now I would like to go and pass it on to the chat wall, and I would like to ask you all, what did you think of the teaser trailer of Elio? Uh, are you guys sold on the idea? Are you more optimistic like me? Or are you more like Logan, where you want to wait and see a bit more of what they can offer, that you're not 100% sold on the idea just yet? Let me know what you all think on this. Uh, let's see what we got here. The big question is, will it be a box office success, uh, though, given it's probably going to be ca- carry a $200 million production uh, lie with previous Pixar films? Don't get me wrong, the animation and characters look good, and I'm not a fan of the liar reveal trope either, but uh, will, it consi- will it convince the audience enough to go and see an original film before going heavily loaded with sequels, starting with Inside Out 2. I hope this is better than Elemental and Lightyear, but who knows? Okay. Uh, Let's see what else. Yeah, I'm sure we'll talk more about that soon enough. Yeah, we will. We will. Don't you worry. Uh, Let's see. Aw, this looks adorable. Elio is a sweet little bean boy. I trust him to uh, represent Earth in trial. He's pure and innocent. I I I support it, though... Why does everyone seem to treat this movie like crap? This and Elemental. Do they want Pixar to go back to making sequels? I'm honestly hoping we only get Inside Out 2 and Toy Story 5 as sequels for this decade. I feel like spring uh, slash March of 2024 is not a good idea because of Spider-Verse. Elemental is not doing well because of the sequels. Delay it. I mean, well, for, oh, I'm shoot. just... But then again, I'm just going to say now... There have been rumors uh, that are saying that because of the uh, because of the potential strike from SAG-AFTRA, so that we may end up with an actor strike, there may be a possibility that not Elio, but Beyond the Spider Verse could actually get delayed. Oh, oh, okay, I get the yeah, I totally understand why, but oh man, because I. Really quick, I really love Across the Spider-Verse. That yeah. movie was amazing. 
So, but I totally get it. If they do delay it, I totally understand. So, yeah, I, I feel like with the current landscape with what's been happening in Hollywood, either Alio or uh, Beyond the Spider Verse is not going to stay in that March release date. Oh, uh, let's see. What Only else time will tell. Exactly. Uh, so far with Elio, it looks cute. What I like so far are definitely the alien designs and the humor did make me laugh. Sure, it sounds cliche, but I do think the crew wants to make something unique out of it. Also, it's another sci-fi film and it's one of my favorite genres ever. It ain't Wally, but I'm open to Elio. All right. Uh, while I think this will be a little appetizer with the main dish being Inside Out 2, this still looks pretty cute. The story does go a little liars revealed for my taste, but the style is pretty quirky and the ending gag got a huge laugh out of me. Uh, I gotta give this a go and you guys should too. Like guys, come on, go, uh, go see it and don't let this flop. What are you guys doing? Uh, but, but that is actually true, considering that next year we're getting two Pixar films with Elio and Inside Out 2. Yeah, but calling Elio the appetizer, oof, that's oh. harsh. Yeah, that is true. I'm I'm sure like the commenter didn't mean it that way, but oh uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, I totally get it, but it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like indirectly, it was like, wait, hold on, scratch that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, going back to here, to say I'm 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 a bit on both sides of each of your statements, like the amazing animation and the comedy does seem like it's fun. Uh, I would be anticipating it. And there's also the sense of predictable storyline with the liars trope. But all to say, I really like the appeal and I guarantee it'll be great. All right. Uh, let's see. Are there any other comments? Um, oh, we'll go with this one. Uh, I'm sure this movie is going to be good, and I'm going to be seeing it in theaters regardless, but as is, this uh, this just isn't grabbing me. One thing we can agree on, though, is that Pixar really needs to fire their marketing guy. First, Elemental underperforms. Well, technically, you got, like, Lightyear that really underperformed, and now you got an Elemental who underperformed because of uh, middling trailers, despite being a modern masterpiece, and now people are already dismissing Elio. Oh, boy. I don't know. I uh, personally, I haven't really seen any of the comments that say that they're already dismissing Elio. But in that regard, uh, oh boy, like I, I, I don't know. Like if it's social media just like really jumping into the trend of like trying to make Pixar fail, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Cal art style. That's not right. Ugh. Yeah, I'll go and read uh, one more comment before we go and take our first break. Um, after watching this, I would say that I'm rather optimistic about Elio. While we haven't seen much, the style does feel very quirky and adorable, with some fun characters on the side. While I can't understand why wouldn't it, uh, wh why wouldn't like it, because rather the liars reveal cliche, I won't argue that the cliche isn't bad by itself. And I would say Over the Hedge and Rango are both movies that use it well. It's only a matter of how you use it. I mean, that could be true. There is a possibility that despite having that plot line mm. that maybe the execution could go and help out and really really fix things up, or at least there's going to be an element to it that will make it so immersive that will make us forget about like the cliche in itself and get us really engaged. So there is that possibility too. Yeah, and I'm not opposed at reusing like cliches in movies. They just got to do it like differently so that way it's more unique. Because if I... Th because you don't want to end up like being like a cringy like sitcom episode, where it's like you know they're going to hammer down that cliche in the worst possible way possible, the worst way possible. But... Yeah. Yeah. Well, but but ultimately, I do believe we will have to wait and see with how that goes. So once again, if you are curious or excited or uh, just wondering when Alia was going to be coming out, again, keep in mind that it will be released in theaters on March of 2024. So with that said, we're going to go on to our first break now. And when we do return, we will still be discussing about Pixar. But now it's going to be the time that we will have the big talk and answer the question, what the fridge happened to Elemental? Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, we were just having a conversation in between, so don't worry, folks. Uh, but we are back, and actually, we will be resuming that convo that we are going to have soon. But, Logan, uh, I would like to go and ask you a question. Um, did you see Elemental yet? No. 
Not yet, at least. <laughs> uh, now, the reason why I haven't seen uh, really on, quick, the reason why I haven't seen yet is because I was busy with other things this weekend and I did end up seeing another movie. You guys are going to be mad at me, but what I saw, but I went and saw The Flash and <sighs> I know it wasn't good, but hey, it was Father's Day weekend. Um, I went to see The Flash with my brother and my dad, and yeah, I mean, they like it, but for me, it's like, I appreciate that I saw it with them, but the movie itself, it has its moments, but you know, so yeah, that's all I'm going to say the matter, so I'm, I'm sorry. You can throw the shade at me as much as you like. Saboteur! Yeah. <laughs> uh. uh yeah but um <laughs> i i understand on your side of the situation it's more about family matters than anything like that but that is mainly what we are going to go and discuss about it's regarding elemental and why is it that it didn't necessarily do so well because they're already saying that Elemental has already made it and has gotten the record of the second worst opening for any Pixar film with around $30 million. Now, I know that some people can go and have a discussion about what happened or as to why, but it looks like Pete Doctor may have a few suggestions. Now, in this article on Variety that I have over here, it actually taught. Uh, it's actually a whole a whole discussion with the chief creative officer of Pixar, Pete Doctor, and discussing about several things about how things are going within Pixar regarding Elemental and all the good work that Peter Son and the crew has done on it, and what is the future of Pixar? What do they have in store? And one of the significant things that they did mention in here is actually with Pete Doctor's discussion about what happened during 2020 and up to the start of 2022, where the pandemic was at its height and uh, Disney decided that instead of releasing Pixar movies onto the big screen, that they would go and put it out on Disney+, Plus, especially when uh, the big screens at the time were not available or they were considered a pretty hazardous place where COVID might end up spreading everywhere so they wanted to go and avoid that entire situation but um even though pete doctor said that he was very thankful for that option of having disney plus so they could go and release movies like soul luca and turning red without shelving it and just letting it sit and wait for like a, a year and a half before they can actually go and release it onto theaters he did say that there was a catch to it and i'll read here from my source on variety as it states in the long run, there's been a bit of a mixed blessing because we've trained audiences that these films will be available to you uh, or available for you on Disney+. Plus. And it's more expensive for a family of four to go into a theater when they know they can wait and it'll come out on the platform. We're trying to make sure people realize that there's a great deal you're missing by not seeing it on the big screen. In the case of Elemental, it's a beautiful spectacle. There, uh, There's detail everywhere. I think you feel it more and it's a better experience. There's the shared experience as well that you got to see, that you get to see, you get to see it in a room with strangers and there's something about that energy that comes from other people that makes the whole experience more vibrant and interesting. And uh, there's even another discussion that Pete Doctor did bring up, and that is in regards to the fact that it is an original movie. Especially when you do see the current cinema landscape right now, Elemental is pretty much surrounded by sequels and, um, and remakes and stuff like that. Like right now, its biggest competitors include The Flash, Transformers, Rise of the Beast, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and The Little Mermaid remake, all of which are that they are all based on popular IPs, whereas Elemental is just its own thing. And in response to the fact that it is an original piece and not a follow-up or anything like that, uh, Pete Doctor stated, Right now, the world seems to want the, the comfort of what they know, which is sequels, and movies based on things like comic books or video games. 
But all of these things were original at one uh, at one point. I think it's essential for us to develop new original stories, which are harder to publicize and harder to get people excited to go see them. But I think audiences deserve it. They want to find that surprise along with the comfort of the expectation. We have our share of sequels in the works. We're doing a sequel to Inside Out, so you can uh, so you get to go back to Inside the Mind of Joy and Sadness. We have another Toy Story, so Woody and Buzz are back. And we have a few other projects, but it's always a balance. So those are the two main things that he would discuss in this article among the other discussions that he would have related to Pixar. But Logan, I would like to know your thoughts on this, not just on what Pete Doctor said, but on why is it that you think uh, uh, Elemental did not have a good opening? <clears throat> Yeah, the reason why I think that Elemental didn't really do as well is because, well, I mean, the first thing is, like, it is an original idea, and chances are, when you make something original, they can be very risky, especially, like, if it's not being made by, like, a well-known studio or distributor or stuff like that. But also, the other reason why I think, like, it didn't do so well, or at least what I saw according to, like, people that, like, mentioned it through social media, is that it's too... It's too much of a Pixar cliche, whereas, like, it feels like it's something that you come to expect out of Pixar. Like, what if we take something that's, like, what if we take something but make it have, like, uh, very emotional feelings towards something that's, like, more realistic? Like, it can be, like, family problems. It can be, uh, uh, yeah, something that's, like, really, I'm trying to think of, like, examples, but I'm, like, blanking. But, you know, you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very familiar. It's like, what that if, if blank you see, have feelings? Yeah, I was trying my best not to say that, but that's mm -hmm. basically the the case of it. So it's just taking that idea, but it's just like it feels for, very like cliche Pixar to do at this point. That I f I get like from the trailers of Elemental, you kind of expect what you get out of it. Two people from different worlds, they collide each other, but you know that one side doesn't prove on the other. Blah blah blah. In the end, they're going to kiss and make up. Like I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Like I'm sure like. From when I seen the trailers, the animation, it looks amazing. Like, mm -hmm. especially the way they did, like, the fire and the water. Like, I know water is never easy to animate when it comes to, like, computer, when it comes to computers. But I feel like they nailed what they did with, like, the water characters in that movie. At mm -hmm. least from what I saw in the trailers. And even, like, the fire. Like, I love, like, the little, like, outlines or the uh, outlines you see on their faces that give, like, you can see, like, their nose and just how they do, like, the flames and the the uh, motions and all that stuff. So I, it looks like it's going to be, like, a nice, like, experience when it comes, like, the animation side of things. Um, and from what I from what I heard from some people online, they seemed like they love it. Like, it's like the next, like, Pixar classic in a sense. Or, well, there are others where it's like, eh, it's nothing too special, but... Yeah, I think the reason why like it's it's not doing so well is because, like I said in the marketing, it just felt too generic of a Pixar film. And I can definitely see why people would want to like at least wait till it's on Disney Plus. Which it's really a shame because I'm because like I said like before, like I really love what Pixar has done with like the previous movies. Like I love Soul, I love Luca, I love Turning Red. Mm -hmm. Lightyear sucked, but <laughs> and I'm sure like Elemental, <laughs> I'm sure Elemental would be great too. But yeah, that's a problem too. Like those those movies, except for Lightyear, they were all released through Disney Plus, and we're at a point now where it's like like you said, like people are like so comfortable with the idea of like Pixar releasing an original film through Disney Plus. Or I shouldn't say Pixar, but like Disney releasing those movies through Disney Plus, that people felt more comfortable just watching at home that way, as opposed to like having that risk to like go in the theater, spend that much money just to see something that they're not quite sure if that's going to be good or not, or at least they're not familiar with. But you think with a brand like Pixar, like you think like people will like go and see it immediately in theaters. But then again, I'm talking to the, like a mind of like in the 2000s, where it's like, that's the case of like every original Pixar movie at the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just really unfortunate. And man, poor Peter, poor Peter. I mean, first yeah. the good dinosaur, now this. Ugh. Yeah, I, I will say with the with the good dinosaur, it's like 
that that was like already very troublesome and that peterson came in to try to like fix the problem but now it is a bit more tragic because like this one is a lot more of a personal project this was his movie that he wanted to go and express so i, de I definitely do understand what you what, what you're saying now i will say that i'm not gonna, i'm not gonna go and fully express my thoughts on elemental i have seen it uh i've done my review of it it will be coming out this friday but I'm just going to say right now that uh, I'm kind of like more in the middle of what the general reaction is. I don't love it. I don't think it's like a Pixar classic or another masterpiece or whatever, but I did enjoy it. Like, I, like, I wouldn't say like, I would definitely not say that it's a bad movie at all. Like the best way that I would put it is that it's just one step under great, which is still like really good. Uh, but with that said though, uh, looking into what Pete Doctor has mentioned about like how it de how it definitely is harder to go and um, release original movies or to go and market original movies that or that you would have to go and um, like the the whole situation with Disney Plus because not just with uh, the Pixar movies but I would I would even say like even with the Disney films as well because um, like when you think about movies like Raya and Encanto they barely did much in theaters but they were massive hits on Disney Plus but I would say that honestly when it comes to Elemental and when it comes to all movies that do flop like every, like all the reasons as to why they would fail may vary. And I feel like with Elemental, the reasons why that isn't going well at the box office are for different reasons as to why Lightyear didn't go well at the box office. Because this is actually a very interesting case, especially when nowadays Elemental is actually one of those very rare Disney movies out there that isn't like a major political target. Like you don't really see grifters labeling it as woke or anything like that. Or like, uh, or at the very least, as much as they would with something like The Little Mermaid remake or Lightyear or Strange World or anything like that. But I, I would honestly agree with you where I would say in terms of the marketing, they didn't necessarily do all that well in terms of selling the entire, uh, the entire idea of what this movie is about because like um i i understand that it is hard to go and try to like really stand out among the crowd to really go and present itself as like this fantastical movie that you really got to see not to mention that it is released during the summer which is during the blockbuster environment and like you have to face some really like daunting competitors that they would have familiar ips that everybody can go and immediately realize like uh spider-man or transformers or little mermaid or even coming soon with indiana jones and all that kind of stuff so i get it that it is definitely a lot more difficult but can but it is true that when you do look at it on paper it, it's not necessarily that impressive like there like you need a lot more than what's been presented in the trailers and all that kind of stuff to really convince you to say that yes it definitely is worth seeing and, um, and, and not to mention the fact that I think another factor, and this is more of a unique case with Elemental or with the Pixar films in general, is that there is kind of like a drawback to Pixar's reputation. The fact that for the longest time during the 20, uh, during the 2000s and even like in some parts of the 2010s, Pixar was known as like the kings of animation, that they have such an incredible high standard where like people have grown used to seeing that if Pixar would release a movie in theaters, like it's really worth watching that like you really have to go and pay attention to it. But if they would not release anything that isn't great, well, well, then people are not going to be that, you know, they're not going to be in that much of a rush to go and check it out. Like, in a way, it does go back to the Disney Plus factor where you would go, where, like, if it's not anything that, like, it's an emergency to go and actually spend all that money to go see it in theaters, then they could just go and patiently wait until they see it on Disney Plus. So that's kind of the, so g going back into the drawback of Pixar's reputation, like it is kind of an Achilles heel where if they would put out something that isn't considered one of the best movies of the year, then it would just 
turn out to be a flop then the interest is just going to go significantly down and that's going to be a dangerous factor uh for pixar in general because in terms of the marketing in the long run just being made by pixar alone is not going to be enough to go and sell tickets it's not going to be enough of a reason uh for it to be considered a legitimate summer blockbuster and maybe for the original movies it would be for the best if they would go and release it sometime in march or or maybe sometime in the fall fall or or something like that because there may be a dangerous chance that maybe pixar doesn't have enough weight on it to go and legitimately compete against the other major blockbusters to go and actually grab that money so i i think with elemental there are numerous of different factors out there but uh with what P pete doctor has been mentioning uh i i think it's only some of the points like they're like he does bring up good points but that that only scratches it scratches the surface of what's going on in the elemental situation yeah and also i feel like something that pixar should take into consideration is now we're lit we're now we're in the day and age where like every studio is being experimental with their animated features and because you mentioned spider-verse with their style but then you got like the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie that also has mm -hmm. like the distinct style uh, with DreamWorks off uh, The Last Wish that has the distinct style. Like when you think about all these like recent animated films, the reason why I feel like they work is because they're taking their chances and being more different when it comes to, like their style. And I'm not saying like the Pixar style now is bad. Like I like I said in the when we talked about the Elo tra trailer, uh, the character designs look great. I feel like they need to like at least try at least one film where they're being more experimental like how they execute like the animation style mm -hmm. and, and instead of like going for like the more like i want to say realistic approach not to say like their films are that realistic but more something that's like make it st uh, stand out compared to like to like red Tui or incredibles or all those films <clears throat> mm -hmm. and yeah. you can definitely see go on. yeah so Sorry. i'll definitely i was gonna say like i'll definitely love to see like pixar's take if they were to do something like extremely like over the top with like spider verse or with teeny like in that style per se mm -hmm. if they're going to go with that is, i'm not sure i mean you can always you can never predict these things and even like with wish like the way they're doing that animation style i think like i'm definitely looking forward to it that's one of the reasons why i'm definitely looking forward to wish because of that blend of like cg mixed with like hand drawn with like the painted backgrounds and all that stuff like i'm definitely looking forward to that and that brings me to another point, too. It's like, it's not just like Pixar I'm concerned with, but it's also with like Walt Disney Animation Studios, because at points they also have that same issue, too, with their films. Mm. Not to say, like, okay, I don't remember, Raya wasn't released in theaters, was it? Uh, or was it just when. It's a complex thing. And like, they did a simultaneous release where, like, some like it's been released in theaters uh but it was also released on disney plus as well and in that regard more p it was obvious more people went to watch it on disney plus because it ended up becoming one of the most watched content of that year yeah and same goes with the canto even though that movie didn't make well at the box office it did really great on disney plus where it was exactly. like we're at a point that once uh, Strange World came to theaters, that movie bombed because people are just familiar with like watching these Disney movies at home. And that's like really concerning. And even with like Strange World, personally, I haven't seen it yet. I'm still kind of like hesitant about watching it because I mean, I heard like mixed things about it, but whether or not I'll watch it soon enough, it's really hard to say. And that's another thing, too, I want to mention about about these original movies. Yeah, they're original. But how well executed are they when it comes to like storytelling and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. Because you can have like the great animation, you can have like the great animation, the great voice acting, all that stuff. If the story doesn't sell, then chances are I'm probably not going to give it a chance to watch it. If it's like mid, maybe I'll take in consideration, but it's it's really hard to say. And going back to what you said about like Pixar, Pixar's reputation and like in the 2010s i feel like the sequels kind of killed it for me not to say that the sequels were bad per se but they're not like they felt like more gene generic sequels like 
I didn't really care as much for Finding Dory, The Incredibles 2, Cars 3. Uh, Monsters University I thought was all right, but it definitely falls on lines like, oh, okay, I can see like it's not like Pixar's top tier movie. I feel like those sequels kind of like made it like iffy for Pixar. And that's why I'm kind of not looking forward to Inside Out 2. I mean, part of me wants to be optimistic about it, but at the same time, it's like, if it falls on line with the previous Pixar sequels, chances are it's like, I'll, I don't know. I just want to be optimistic about it, which it sucks for me to say that because I want Pixar and Disney to do well at the box office with these movies. But I just feel like they need to like have better control when it comes to like the storytelling, when it comes to like the scripts and all that stuff. So mm-hmm. I feel like I don't want to say they're playing it safe, but I feel like they are playing it safe. Yeah, I, I do get what you mean. Yeah, it, it's just like they got to they, they, they do have a bit of a tough road ahead of them, like if they want to go and evolve and to adapt and going into to what you said before about like trying to make something that could be more stylized. I mean, I would love to see that happen as well. But then again, looking at their current lineup of what they do have coming soon, like with Inside Out 2, and then there's also going to be a Toy Story 5 and stuff like that. I feel like, honestly, there's like there's not a whole lot of leeway for them to go and make more original content because like you're, you're going to get those sequels that are going to be in the way and they already have their own established style. And I mean, like, yeah, I would, you know, I as much as I want to be optimistic for for um, Inside Out 2 and Toy Story 5, I still want Pixar to go and make original content. Like, I don't want them to fall into sequelitis just because people didn't care to go and watch the original stuff like Elemental. But one thing yeah. I am curious to know, though, is um, it, like I know this might sound like a big question, but what do you think Pixar should do to make sure that the mistakes of Elemental don't happen again with Elio? I feel like the way I see it is they got to try to make it like less predictable. Because, like I said, with the reason why I feel Elemental like is not doing so well is because people are like familiar with the Pixar style that they feel like, oh, this doesn't feel like anything special or unique. I feel like if they want to like improve themselves with Elio, which I'm sure at this point it's already too late because the movie's basically done. But <laughs> but well, I will I mean, say well, like I mean at least with the marketing. Oh, for marketing purposes, um, I say when it comes to marketing, make it feel less predictable like get let definitely like keep the trailers like more ambiguous and know like what to expect like don't show too much of the movie keep it like very simple and definitely like showcase the highlights of the movie whether it be like visuals or the greatest joke possible but yeah definitely like highlight things that people are not going to expect out of it because otherwise it could really benefit like elio's chances at the box office that is, if it's going to release in March, it's mm-hmm. hard to say after what you just said earlier. <laughs> but yeah, no, true. I just hope like they need to like do well with the marketing and they should like definitely consider like looking at like how the other studios are doing their marketing. Like when it comes to, I mean, Universal did a great job on marketing the Mario movie and look how well that did. I mean, Granted, that's, it's already that, that's on- Illumination. Illumination, I consider them like the best of the best when it comes to marketing their movies. Yeah, exactly. They, I mean, that sounds like, I mean, yeah, it's like them like selling out, but sometimes you have to sell out in order for things to succeed. Mm-hmm. I know it's not like that's like the that's not the right message, but it's just especially in this day, day and age where you when you try to be original, you gotta like do your best to like market yourself in a way that is very unique and less predictable, and try not to make it like oh another basic Pixar movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do get what you mean. I mean, I like it, it's unfortunate and even I'm sad to see that Elemental is not doing well. I mean, like the only saving grace would be if word of mouth is doing so well that in the long run it could work out, but in the current position that it's in right now, it's like tough to say, honestly. Yeah, and who knows, maybe once it's on Disney Plus, they'll do even better, but that's that's like after the theatrical release. So mm-hmm. that changes there is like, it's hard to say really, because mm-hmm. I don't know that how, I'm not sure how well something does at Disney plus in order to make it like success. The most I know is like, if Disney says like, Oh, Hey, and did well on Disney plus let's market the hell out of that movie. 
or like let's exploit that movie with like merchandise, theme parks, all that stuff. It's it's hard to say what the numbers are doing. And yeah, it doesn't really help much that going back to the originals in Disney Plus really quick, it doesn't help much that they got rid of like most of their original Disney Plus content on mm-hmm. their streaming service. So that's unfortunately saying a lot. Yeah. It, it, it's a messy situation, especially when Disney doesn't like tell people like what the numbers are, like the other streaming services. But with that said, I want to have a quick word with the chat wall. I want to know from you all, how do you feel about the current status of Elemental? What is like, how do you feel about why is it it's not working well? And if you haven't seen it yet, exp- then uh, explain why you haven't gone and immediately watched it as of yet. You know, this could be useful information. Let's see. It's really a shame that Elemental flopped over the Father's Day and Juneteenth weekend. Uh, It got released in a crowded month, too. In addition to being called formulaic, it also doesn't help that some people called it a Zootopia ripoff or or say that it looks too similar to the Fireboy and Watergirl indie game before giving it a chance. Plus, the internet decided to unfavorably compare Disney and Pixar to other animation studios now with their recent movies like Spider-Verse and Mario. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Okay, here's the thing everyone should consider doing. Stop panicking over opening weekend numbers and give Elemental time. If you guys could see Puss in Boots in theaters, then I'm sure Elemental will have its own success uh, theatrically. But I'm sure that it will do okay at best financially, but I hope uh but I honestly love Elemental. It started uh started off a little cliche, but then the execution and the rest of it really helps. But yeah, Pixar needs better marketing and I'm sure word of mouth will help the movie out. Uh, let's see. Uh, I mainly attribute Elemental's performance to the case of poor timing, seeing as it dropped uh, the same day as The Flash. Having seen both movies, I can confirm Elemental is in every way better. I think it would have done better in July. That's a little dry spell for family film, so audiences won't need to choose between another Pixar home run or Elemental putting a baby in a microwave. Wait, is this, is this the debate? Otherwise, poor uh, Peter picked a peck, picked a peck of pickle peppers. <laughs> yeah, really quick, that baby in the microwave scene, That's that was stupid. I don't get why they do it. It, it, it. There's more context into the movie itself, but it's still stupid how they executed it. So I don't know. It sounds like common Ezra Miller behavior. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oof. Uh, anyways, um, I said this movie was okay when I saw it on Thursday, and it was on par with Onward in terms of quality. Uh, it turns, but it didn't uh, deserve to be a flop. Yeah, it's not great, but I hope the studio remains okay in terms of the post-COVID world climate. But hey, at least we should celebrate that the Flash movie is doing poorly at the box office. Uh, Gotta go. uh, Ably to watch a mystery screening of either Nimona or Ruby Gilman, but I'm leaning towards the latter. Okay. Uh, Oh, shoot. I forgot about Onward. That's 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 actually the last movie I saw in theaters before COVID hit. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Oof, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, Onward is a very unique case. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, I uh, thought it was all right. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, like, what happened to it at the box office? Oh, like, yeah. It was very unfortunate. Exactly. Uh, very unfortunate. Anyways, I'll read uh, one more comment. Uh, I'm honestly extremely disappointed. While Elemental wasn't Pixar's best animated film, it is still upsetting due to people being used to watching Pixar films on Disney Plus and a lot of the uh, June competition. It's just extremely disappointing. Although on the bright side, uh, at the very least, The Flash did flop over the weekend, so at least there is some justice in this world. All right, so with that said, we're going to go on our next break, and when we do come back... Uh, we're going to go back and watch another trailer, but this time we are going to be looking into what is easily among the biggest highlights of the Annecy Film Festival. So stay tuned for that because we got some exciting things coming up. And we are back. So, uh, Logan, uh, uh, we are going to go and watch a trailer right over here. And uh, you just mentioned to me that while you're not necessarily familiar with the uh, book that it is based on, you did know what happened to it because that was quite a story right there. I am definitely familiar with it, but yes, it is indeed very interesting. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it went through such a wild production, but at least we do see that it does finally have a conclusion. And I'll just say right now, from the response that we have gotten at Annecy, apparently it was one of, if not the biggest standing ovation that happened at Annecy this year. Like it was massively big and people were just loving it. And while there may not have been like tons of reviews that came out of it, the handful of them that did come out, apparently they were raving about it. Like what we're talking about across the Spider-Verse may have some competition kind of reviews that we have already received. But then again, like some people could argue that, you know, it's a review that came out from a festival and usually festival movies would get up would end up getting a lot more critical acclaim than they would being released uh naturally like in theaters or in streaming but still though it does raise up the intrigue of what would be to come so with that said let's go ahead and check out the trailer for the upcoming anticipated animated movie uh nimona <laughs> and that is Nimona, to which it will be coming soon to Netflix on June 30th. So, Logan, I would like to know your thoughts on uh, what we have just watched. Is it wrong to say that when she transforms into, like, different animals, it gives me Cusco vibes from The Emperor's New Groove? <laughs> uh, that is true. Because you know how... In you know how in that film, like where he transferred to an animal, he's like red all over. That, that's yeah. maybe why I thought of that. But no, overall, um, yeah, I may not be familiar with the book that this movie is based on, but from the looks of it, it does look really promising as a animated movie. Like the style is definitely different. It looks fun. I'm sure the characters are going to be like great to witness and all that stuff and get like to join his journey with. So yeah, am I hyped for this movie? Not as hype compared to like everybody else's, but if I get the chance, I'll definitely watch on Netflix. All right, interesting. You know, the funny thing is, like, while you mentioned that, like, it, like, all of Nimona's transformations kind of remind you of uh, the Emperor's New Groove with Cusco and his little transformations. Honestly, for me, when I see all those transformations, I was thinking of the Sword and the Stone with the Wizards duel. Like, oh, it kind of reminds me a bit of that. I can see that as well. Yeah. <laughs> like you see all those tra transformations and stuff, but I got to say, it's kind of funny with all the different discussions that we've had in regards to Pixar and like what they should do, because I feel like what we have just witnessed is a little bit of like what Pixar should be like the stuff we've talked about, like that kind of applies to what we have just seen with Nimona, where what they are selling you with the idea is something a lot more exciting. And even the animation style, it's like, it's something that is a lot more different. Like, yeah, they are taking uh, the same pages of Spider-Verse and try to be a little bit more stylized, try to be a bit more different, but this uh style that they are producing like it's it's not something that's like okay it's very much like what we just saw like what they're doing with either uh spider-verse or uh mutant mayhem or even mitchell's Wars and the machines like it is clearly its own thing that it is trying to do but uh but like from the animation you see like yeah like it is emphasizing a lot more onto the action and seeing all the crazy transformations. And, and I will say the action, I will say is more exciting than like the animation style itself, because that's when you see like all the craziness and the fast pace that that is happening. And like even the, the scale of the battle that's going to be going on like that, that does seem like something that would grab my attention. I'm not going to immediately say like, Oh my God, this is amazing, but it's like, okay, you got my intrigue. I'll see how it is when the movie does come out. But also, I think the biggest thing that does sell me is actually the dynamic between Nimona and the knight that is being framed for murder. Uh, uh, I believe his name is Ballister. Like, you see the dynamic that is between the two and the comedic antics that do come out of it. And 
honestly, it's surprisingly fun. Like that, that's one thing that really does promise that this movie really has a lot of high energy and a chance that it will have moments where uh, they will present some heart as well. Uh, like you will see some tender moments. Like you see how there's this one guy that Ballister really, really likes, uh, but it's, it's just heartbroken that now everyone, including the guy he likes, uh, just sees him as like a villain. Uh, but then we do also see uh, the backstory. Like we do get a bit of a taste of Nimona's backstory as well, where she was, you know, where she was badly treated a as a kid and like explaining to us why is it that, you know, she became like the, the chaotic rebel that we do see in the trailer and, and stuff like that. And even like, you just see these wild random moments that would show up. It, it, it's basically promising us that it's just, you know, that, that they are planning to go and make this a crazy ride. And I think, and, and funny enough, like I would say this is more, of a blockbuster than something that's meant to be more thought provoking, you know, something in the veins of like what elemental wants to be, or even spider verse. Like this isn't necessarily something to really go and deliver a massive message, even though like it could, it, like it, it definitely could, but like mainly the biggest draw of it all is just for the fun of it, to see the crazy action, to see Nimona transform into different uh, animals, to see uh, all the battles between knights and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it definitely does look like it's going to be like a fun time. And that's why I feel like most animation, most animation films should be is like you need to have like make it fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And I can definitely tell from like the animation, the action. And it's, I really love the the facial expressions that Monona gives, like wherever she gets like that. I don't want to say crazy mode, but when she shows her grin or teeth. Yeah, like, like she, she looks like I, a little I, like she looks like a little gremlin. Exactly. Yeah. Like those parts I really appreciate. And is it? more like the animation style like is it more like cell shaded or is it more like how how would you describe that um honestly cell shaded would be a good way uh, a good way to describe it honestly like you do look at it and i mean like the colors are a lot more straightforward like you could tell that it is 3d but it's not like full you know it's not trying to emulate a different it's not trying to be like 2d yeah. or anything like that I would say in a way it's a little bit like what we've gotten with um, it, it's a little bit like what we've received with um, the bad guys, but leaning more on a Disney style more so than like an anime style. I think that's the best way to describe it. Yeah, because I can definitely tell like it, there are like moments where it kind of looks like 2D if you uh, pause it, but you can definitely tell it's like. 2D and 3D's clothing, in a sense. And mm -hmm. I feel like they did a better job executing that than um, compared to what they've done with that Chip and Dale movie. But oh, that's yeah. a different story. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the, the Chip and Dale movie, that's like, that 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 was supposed to be like a, a, it's just a Disney Plus exclusive. And yeah, like, honestly, what they did with Nimona, it, lo it looks way better than, the, than that ugly style in, uh, like, with Chip in that feature. But yeah, like this one, yeah. like, you could tell this one is... Um, like this one has been given like more careful attention, uh, more, you know, more, more craftsmanship to make sure that like they're going for a specific style and they want to make sure that like it looks right. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I, I mean, like I said, like I'm not the, I'm not as hyped compared to like everybody else's, but I do definitely see the appeal of it. And yeah, I'll definitely will check it out when it does get released on June mm -hmm. 30th, which now think about that's there's a lot of movies coming out on June 30th because oh, there's yeah. that Indiana Jones, uh, that DreamWorks movie. I'm yeah. sure we'll talk about later. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, if I have time, I'll definitely check it out. And you know, it's oh, funny. Yeah. I was like close on considering like canceling my Netflix subscription, mm -hmm. but I'll hang on to it just a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah. Wait until July at the very least, get your fix of Nimona and then you can be off. <laughs> yeah. Temporarily, I'm gonna wait to get it back till Stranger Things is released. So, but yeah. <laughs> Although I am curious, though, what what would you say is the one thing, or like, why is it that you feel like you're not as hyped up as the others? Like, what would you say is the one thing that's holding you back from feeling really excited to go and immediately watch this movie? 
I don't know. Maybe it's because, like I said, I'm not too familiar with the book. And I feel like I can't, like, get too invested with it, like, how, like, the story's executed. But uh, it's one of those movies I don't really think too much about, like, ones that I'm definitely looking forward on seeing it. But, I mean, it could always, like, change my mind. I Like I said, like, I can, I'm very optimistic when it comes to, like, more, like, ideas like this. But it's just never, like, it's not one of those movies that I'm, like gonna rush and to see it when it's like released like i'm sure like i'll give it a little time like if i have like some free time i'll definitely like watch it but i mean i mean then again that's how i am with like most like animated movies nowadays or just movies in general like i know i talk, I talk about like i feel bad for original movies not doing well in theaters but at the same time i just haven't really got a chance to watch that many movies in theaters given my personal life and all that stuff so mm. i usually save like the movies i'm definitely hyped for later like, I want to say, like, the most I've seen in theaters lately were the Mario movie, Spider-Verse, and The Flash. And granted, they are IP-based. I'm sorry, but I was definitely hyped for those. But, I, and like I said, I will definitely see Elemental soon. I just don't know when just yet, but hopefully this week. So, okay. but yeah, I don't know. Like, Manoa, like I said, like, I'm not as familiar with the the book, but it looks it looks promising. But yeah, hopefully I answered your question. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, I understand. I understand. Like, I, I just wanted to ask, like, you know, to, to like, you know, to see more of your perspective of like what's happening in your mind about the excitement. If you really want to see it, if not, you know, no, but it is interesting. And I do understand like the whole life thing, because like even with me, like the main, main reason as to why I would watch any movie in theaters nowadays is because of reviewing purposes that I got that I got to go and watch it uh, for the sake of a review. I mean, like, I think the only time that I've done so like the last time was my second viewing of the Super Mario Brothers movie because I went to watch it with friends. So I, I get nice. how you feel like, you know, life can often be in the way. Mm-hmm. But I was going to say, do you want to talk about the backstory about this movie? Um, I mean, we could go and have a quick summary of it because it, it like it definitely is a, a very fascinating story because like, as we all know, this is technically the final animated feature from Blue Sky Studios, uh, especially when uh, it's been ever since 2015 that they wanted to go and make it or it, it was in 2015 that um, Fox ended up buying the rights to go and adapt that into an animated film. Then suddenly Disney stepped in with the whole Fox acquisition. And uh, then in, in uh, 2021, that's when we had the tragic news that Blue Sky would completely shut down and also shut down the entire production of Nimona, which at the time was like 75% complete. That was until mm. a year later when Annapurna stepped in and they decided to go and finish the job where they had a studio called D-Neg Animation to go and finish up the rest of the animation, uh, the rest of the visuals. And uh, they made a deal with Netflix to go and have the release that we have here today. It definitely is a, a fascinating story. Okay, yeah, because that's the one thing I was like kind of questioning about this whole thing. Like, I was familiar about the whole like story, the situation. But the one thing I was like kind of like, I wasn't quite sure is like, you mentioned that Blue Sky already completed like the 75% of the movie. Did they basically just took those 75% and just like tweak it up a little bit or just finish the rest of how it was originally made? Or was the whole thing like, like, was that, was that whole like made from like the scrap that Blue Sky did? Or did they like start from the beginning, scrap everything they'd done with and just start from the beginning? Uh, I could be wrong on that. It's tough to say. I think it's more like a continuation, like... Maybe D-Neg uh, Animation has already been collaborating with Blue Sky on the production. Like, they've been working with them. I, I could be wrong on that. But then again, I do know that, like, the two directors that they did hire to finish the job, like, they were Blue Sky veterans. Like, they were at Blue... Like, uh, in fact, I think they were the directors of Spies in Disguise before uh, the whole thing shut down. So I think it's more like a continuation. Like, they did manage to salvage whatever they could from, uh, the from like, what they've done at Blue Sky and then finish all that up. I mean, uh, uh, gotcha. people, uh, yeah, like uh, uh, Chabal, like if you know the answer to that, like feel free to go and uh, pitch in. 
apparently, well, already I do see some people say um, like the whole production uh, is resumed. It's not completely scrapped, I think. D-Neg worked on the 3D conversion of uh, Spies in Disguise. Okay, so I think there there already was a connection between D-Neg Animation and... Um, and, and Blue Sky Studios that they already had some of the files on hand to go and keep on working. And then suddenly when production resumed, that's when like they kind of moved all into DNEG to go and finish everything up. Gotcha. The reason why I say that is because judging from the trailer alone, like the animation looks completely different com from what uh, Blue Sky has done in the past. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was kind of like questioning because not to say that Blue Sky has done like experimental stuff before. I mean, look at the Peanuts movie. That exactly. was completely different compared to like what they've done with the Ice Age movie. So, and so I was like curious about that. And now I was like curious, like if the movie were to remain as a Blue Sky movie, would people still appreciate it for what it is? If that was the case? I think so. I think it would be like the one film that would really turn things around because even beforehand, there was a lot of hype, especially for the LGBTQ plus representation that is in the movie. So there was already oh, a lot. So yeah, there was already a lot of excitement that was going on. And like, that was one of the big things that like people were very much upset about when uh, the production shut down and when Blue Skies shut down. Like, keep in mind, there was a whole campaign in the past where like a lot of animation fans were going hashtag save Nimbus mona so yeah like i think like if it were released by blue sky like we would have seen like um like people would treat it kind of like how people would view dreamworks when they put out uh puss and boots the last wish or the bad guys or when sony put out the spider-verse films gotcha yeah i mean nothing against blue sky as an like, animation company like i do like some of their stuff like like i mentioned the peanuts mm -hmm. movie i did like certain elements from uh robots and um Horn Years of Who. Yeah. I really liked the first Ice Age movie. Didn't bother seeing the sequels because from what I heard they sucked. But yeah, nothing gets Blue Sky in general. I just feel like I was quite sure, like, given like some of their track records with some of their movies, I was quite sure people would be like that invested, but a lot of people are very invested. And you mentioned about that campaign about saving the movie. And here we are now. It's finally being released through Netflix and all I gotta say is, like, um, if the hype is real for this movie, Disney is definitely kicking themselves in the butt for that. Like, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, but then, we'll see how it goes. And I did hear uh, apparently during production, Disney was like, while Blue Sky was alive in their final years, Disney, like the leadership at Disney was doing like a lot of meddling that 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 Blue Sky keep had to like keep on fighting to make sure that like things work out their way instead of like Disney saying like, oh, you should have less of this. Oh, you should do a bit more of that, you know, and all that kind of crap. <laughs> was it because of Bob Chapek? Probably. I mean, yeah, it, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. I mean, it could yeah. have been, but there's no like there's no confirmation, but it's like probably most likely. Right. Um, I mean, but, I'm sure there's like more people involved with it, but I, I immediately go to Bob J. Peck. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. But yeah, so if you are excited to go and check out Nimona, then keep in mind that the movie will be released exclusively on Netflix on June 30th. So with that said, I would like to go into the chat wall and I would like to ask you all, how do you all feel about what we have seen with the trailer of Nimona? Are you hyped up to go and watch this movie? Are there any questions that you would like to raise up? Let me know what you all think on that. All right, let's see. Man, I still can't get over how good this movie looks. The animation, top tier. The voice acting, so full of life. The comedy, pretty damn funny. All in all, this looks like one of the best animated films of the year alongside Spider-Verse and Mario. Definite must-watch right here. If only one of my damn theaters would put up some time. I rented the tux already. I don't want it to be $200 down the drain. <laughs> oh, Whoa. boy. Well, I mean, you could save it for Ruby Gilman if you want. You could go, you, you could be one of the gen, be one of the gentle gills. Like have that trending going on. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, let's see. 
Okay, uh, this will be interesting. You're all gonna hate me, but I was kind of underwhelmed by this trailer. The animation definitely is up to Blue Sky's quality, but the art style makes everything look like a Wii game, and the character designs look weird. Also, Nimona herself doesn't really seem like a very compelling protagonist to me. Uh, she just seems like a brasher, less lovable Vanellope Von Schweetz with Animorph powers. Uh, I get it, it gets points in my book for featuring tra tragic tale of gay lovers, though. Interesting. Interesting. Never thing. thought that a comparison of Vanellope, but I can definitely see where they're coming from with that. I can see a little a bit. A little bit. I can yeah. see a bit. Like, it, like, uh, like, I'm not saying entirely, but it is there. Let's see. Yeah. I'm so glad Nimona is finally here after production issues at former Blue Sky Studios, thanks to Disney executives and Bob Chapek. Uh, but now got better at Annapurna and Netflix. The animation is spectacular with cell, uh, with cell stylish, and the characters have fun personalities, especially Nimona with the shark wearing sunglasses dancing moment. Uh, some women may be disappointed with the male characters in golden armor because his new hairstyle uh, instead of his long golden hair from the original graphic novel. I mean, there will be some changes for sure. There will be some prominent differences, but I mean, we'll see how the movie will go when it's uh, when it'll be released. I love this girl. Nimona's chaotic energy gives me joy, and my younger sister loves her and the gay romance. Let's hope that romance isn't the uh, Catradora. Don't ask. Long story. Very abusive. Uh, that even my sister ha uh, sees it as problematic. Uh, June has uh, been a really good month for animated movies. Spider-Verse, Elemental, still need to see it. My Pixar opening day tradition broke for the first time since Finding Dory. And now Nimona. Even though Annapurna finished it, uh, I still see this as a blue, as blue Sky swan song film. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what else do we have? Um... Blue, oh, speaking of this Blue Sky Swan Song, Blue Sky Swan Song indeed. For all the years Netflix has existed, there were so many movies that I wanted to see but couldn't due to budget issues. Now I am more comfortable uh, in that sector. I definitely want to sub to Netflix just to see Nimona. The animation isn't on par with uh, Across the Spider-Verse, I'll give it that, but the story and characters really sound interesting with uh, what we have seen so far. Now, if only uh, we could get a revival of Me and My Shadow via Netflix. Ooh, that's another story right over there. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, Nimona so far looks great. As I said before, I really wish I could see this film in theaters instead of Netflix like I did with Pinocchio. Hell, I even watched The Mitchell's Source of the Machines on the big screen. I heard there are early screenings happening soon, but it's in cities so far away from me. But I'm sure Nimona will be a fun time even at home. Yeah, I do wish Nimona could even scream, uh, could screen around my place. That would be very nice and very convenient for me if, uh, if, if I can have that early review. But then again, worst nice. case, yeah, but then again, worst case scenario, if not, well then, good news on Sunday, I'm actually going to go and watch uh, Ruby Gilman. So there is that. There you go. <laughs> uh, let's see, I'll read two more comments before we go on our next break. Is it me or is Netflix keeping Nimona in the dark with the marketing? I like the new trailer and I'm happy that it's getting rave reviews at the festival, but I don't know if Netflix is giving it all the attention with the hype. Like, uh, why is the official uh, the official trailer coming out two weeks before release and the theatrical release is rumored to be coming out this week and we haven't heard crap about it? I don't know. Uh, they're, they are very weird about it, but I'm still going to watch it. I don't think it's anything related to the Nimona. That's just what Netflix does. That's what they usually do. Their marketing is yeah. always so weird. I was going to say, if you thought the elemental marketing was bad, Netflix, when it comes to like marketing their films, it's 10 times worse. Because mm -hmm. I feel like I barely know these movies are being released. Like, Yeah, they always they always like market it at the very last minute. Yeah, it's so bizarre. Mm hmm. Anyways, um, one more comment. After, ri uh, after rising from Blue Sky's grave, Nimona is ready to bring mayhem and chew bubblegum, and she's all out of gum. I think uh, what's easily the best appeal for this movie is that it doesn't try to be anything deep or thought-provoking, and instead, it is nothing more but pure fun, adrenaline, and chaos, which easily attracts the fun-loving part of our brain. And with Nimona's backstory, a lot of people will draw in uh, with the whole resurrection and giving Disney a major slap to the face 
So yeah, I do see a lot of hype that is going on. And if you are excited for Nimona coming out on the big screen, or not, not on the big screen, on Netflix, then keep in mind it will be coming out on June 30th. Now, we are going to go and have another break right now. And uh, speaking of Netflix, we will be talking about another movie that is coming soon and that it has been announced at Annecy. But the big catch is that apparently it's also a DreamWorks film. And we are back. And what we will be discussing about is actually an upcoming Netflix movie. And uh, it's funny to go and mention because at Annecy, they, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, uh, at Annecy, they did a whole lot of announcements. Like they would go and reveal numerous of different TV shows and numerous of movies as well, giving us a lot of info about what they have coming soon, including uh, one of them that's also worth mentioning now is Gendy Tartakovsky's Fixed, which uh, it's kind of um. interesting to see the variety of reactions, I gotta say. <laughs> I will say I'm definitely looking forward to that movie, but we'll make, yeah, that's all I got to say at the moment. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, fair enough. But what we have here is actually going to be a real interesting one. It technically is another Netflix movie, but it is actually going to be delivered to us by none other than DreamWorks. Yes. After the years of supplying them with many different shows, they are going to go and now deliver their first ever feature film with Orion and the Dark. This is going to be a movie that will be the directorial debut of animator Sean Chars, uh, Charmetz. And it will also be a movie that is written by Charlie Kaufman, which you may probably know Charlie Kaufman as the filmmaker whom uh, around the last decade, back in 2015, actually, he was the filmmaker that gave us the uh, highly acclaimed movie and honestly pretty underrated movie Anomalisa. And uh, now he decided to go into the family-friendly entertainment to go and uh, write down Orion and the Dark, which is actually based on the 2014 book by Emma Yarlett. And for those of you who don't necessarily know what this movie will be about, uh, it is stated here, reading from my source on Variety, uh, the boy is named Orion, who is going to be voiced by Jacob Tremblay, an elementary schooler and full-time freaky cat unnerved by heights, spooked by domestic animals, and rendered nearly catatonic by that worst plight of them all, the dark. Only one, uh, only one night, the dark, voiced by Paul Walter Hauser, uh, Hauser, just about had enough, so he takes Orion on a nocturnal adventure to show the boy there is nothing to fear but fear itself. And at that point, um, so far from what the people at Annecy have seen, there wasn't really a whole lot that apparently it was, uh, there were just three excerpts that they were shown. And like, we do have these images right over here with, uh, Orion and standing next to, uh, darkness himself. And then like, we got a closer look at Orion and even like, a. Uh, a bit of a look of a, a bit of a better look with Orion over here and the gigantic dark just like on the side, just chilling with him. And uh, we don't necessarily have a confirmation as to when this is going to be fully coming out, uh, but they did confirm that not only will it be on Netflix, but also it will be coming out in 2024, as well as like a few extra descriptions about the tone of the movie, how things are going to be, uh, how they mentioned that while it is mainly going to be a 3D movie, there will be like 2D scribble moments that will be featured as well uh, when we do look more into the head of uh, Orion and what he's thinking and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And apparently they say that there's also going to be a cameo or an, a, a really good impression of Werner Herzog. <laughs> so who who knows? Like, um, uh, apparently they're going to be promising something new with this. And on top of that, it will be a Netflix movie. So I would like to know your thoughts on this, Logan. What did you think of uh, the idea of this movie? Honestly, I didn't really give it too much thought about it, but hey, A plus for originality. And it definitely sounds something unique, especially for like a DreamWorks movie, because I know they've been like very experimental with their latest movies lately. Um, kind of surprised 
like they're still releasing movies through Netflix as opposed to Peacock. I'm sure it's like still kind of like a contract thing they had with mm-hmm. Netflix, but but other than that, yeah, um, definitely sounds like a promising idea. Uh, wish I can really say more about it because can't really say much at the moment, given that yeah, they did explain much about it and they did say it's like based on a book, but yeah, I don't know. I'm definitely intrigued to know what they have in stores of that movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, for, uh, I do get what you mean, because, like, even looking at this, on one hand, like, there's not a whole lot that we do know about. And I'm just going to say, in terms of the concept that they provide, it definitely is cute. I'm not going to go and immediately say that I'm completely sold on the idea, and I got to say, like, I must go see this immediately. Like, there's nothing immediately to go and grab. But, like, I would say, at best, it is a cute-looking movie. Like, you see the, con, you know, like... The concept art, nothing too amazing. It looks cute. Um, like I like even Darkness himself having like that cute little chibi face, even though like he has that giant body that, you know, he looks like the ghost of Christmas yet to come from uh, a Christmas carol. But uh, you know, you know, I would say at best so far, it it, it does look cute, but it's nothing like I would say that's like really special that you need to go and watch. But yeah, I, I do feel like I guess with Netflix, you know, like there is that big deal that Netflix does have with um, or that DreamWorks has with Netflix and not and not necessarily on Peacock. I guess it's like it's that longstanding deal. And I guess it's more of a situation of if it isn't broken, then why even fix it in the first place? Because I'm sure. Yeah, like technically there is Peacock, but Peacock isn't necessarily like the biggest competitor right now in terms of like the whole streaming wars and stuff like that and especially with netflix being a much more prominent platform i guess it's like a much more a a much wiser decision to go and like make big name exclusives for them more so than on peacock like yeah i get it like peacock does get some competitors but with netflix on the other hand like if you are going to have something that would be released on the big screen, then, like, you might as well go and, like, put it exclusively onto streaming. I guess, you know, interesting, in a way, it's like they're kind of following the same footsteps as Sony Animation. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised Mm. if it's because of Sony Animation that DreamWorks wants to go and follow those same steps and release movies onto streaming instead of... um, on to uh onto the big screen because yeah it, it probably is a case of trying to avoid the situation of like what pixar is facing right now with elemental that you know they got a fully original concept and chances are it may not do well at the box office and with that said uh there is like uh, some people might get upset with me saying this but if elemental isn't doing well at the box office I highly doubt Ruby Gilman is going to do well either. Like even I have a bit of my doubts on that. Uh, so yeah, with- unfortunately, because I was going to say really quick, I was thinking about that too, because I totally forgot that movie is going to release on the 30th and on the same day as Indiana Jones talk mm-hmm. about oof material right there. And from the trailers I seen that, that does look like it'll be like a nice movie to watch, but unfortunately it's, Really hard to say at that moment, especially if we're going to compare if you're going to be up against Indiana Jones of all things like. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll see. So, yeah, like unless like it's get like unless it, it's able to get like raving reviews like with uh with the bad guys or Puss and Boost the Last Wish. Yeah, I don't I, I think that's going to be another flop. And I think that is DreamWorks trying to go and adapt on the uh on the current format uh, on like what's going on with cinema where movie where like any sequels that they would go and release they would go and put it on the big screen like they'll be fine with trolls 3 that's going to be coming soon but with something like with ruby gilman or like with what we have right now with um with uh orion in the dark it's best to go and put that onto the big screen instead so honestly, yeah, and- I don't I don't blame them. It sucks to see that, but like I get the strategy because original movies, and especially with what we've seen with Elemental, they don't necessarily do all that great uh in movie theaters. I will say on the plus side of original movies going straight to streaming, 
there'll be less of a hassle to deal with people in the theater. Like I mm-hmm. seen video clips of like people like at the theater, whereas like there will be somebody audience that'll cause like drama against like somebody else, or they'll be like dealing with like some rude customers. There's a plus side to that. I mean, granted, I haven't dealt with any issues when I go see movies in theaters, but I just get like worried. Like there's going to be, I'm always afraid there's always going to be like that one person that might ruin the experience for me. And that's why when I went to sell all Spire into the Spider Verse, a new one, uh, I saw it with like a group of friends, and we were the only people in that theater that saw it because we saw it like way early in the morning, like around like twelve o'clock in the afternoon, and we got the theater to ourselves. And I'm and that was definitely a movie that I was so focused. I want to be so attached that I don't want like a kid crying or something that will mm-hmm. cause drama or or yeah. And I, I, I'm not sure if you saw this one TikTok video, but apparently, like, when the new Avatar movies were released, apparently there's, like, this group of people that were, like, in the front of the theater doing, like, a music video in front of the theater. Like, oh. I don't know what... You, you don't... Have you seen that video? I don't think so, but yikes, yeah, it's, it's so weird. It's, like, as the movie was playing, there's, like, these group of, like, five teenagers that are, like, they got their phone in front of them rights on like singing in front of it like doing like this like cringy tiktok video or something like that and, and i just like think to myself you're spending a lot of movie or spending a lot of money on a movie that you're not even gonna watch like you're not only be you're you're being an idiot that's all mm-hmm. i'm gonna to say it's like who who would do such a, uh i don't know i feel like ever like ever since people are like back in the public i feel like things have gotten like too crazy with people not just like with movie theaters but also like some of the videos i've seen seen through like theme parks but yeah in short um yeah i i mean i would love to see original movie in theaters but i get why the purpose is but and as for this particular movie that we're talking about not to um i mean like i said like i mean it shows potential i just need to see like a trailer for it that's and then we'll see how things go because mm. yeah it's one thing to get excited for like a movie they announce um, but we just got to wait to see how the execution will be because there have been movies where like they announced something and I'll be excited for, and I'm definitely looking forward to see the trailer for it. But yeah, for this one, sounds like a nice idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the thing. Like for me, at best, I would say that it is a cute idea. I could see how something like this would be heartfelt, but at the same time, I think I totally get why DreamWorks would want to go and just, release that only on streaming because i do not see this survive at the box office or compete against any other uh, excuse me i don't see this compete against any other feature film out there like it would just be trampled so i do get it and i mean like well we'll see if there are more you know like we will have to wait until like next year if we're gonna see more content from this but like just from the idea of it, I could see the appeal. I could see where there can be a lot of charm. I could see where, like, kids will enjoy it. Uh, I, and, and, you know, there is one joke uh, that they did wrote here that it, it is kind of cute. Uh, like, it's, it's over here. Like, um, but with all of Orion's fears, nothing compares to the nightly visitor who greets him once the lights go out. Only our dark is a gradualist and good time fellow. So he takes the rejection in stride. I'm going to get you to overcome your fears if it kills me. He chides to the boy. And I'm immortal, by the way. So I have all the time in the world. So honestly, (laughs) like, there are those things that do sound pretty cute. I'm not expecting anything amazing out of it. But, you know, like, I'm just expecting a nice little time. Like, I think that's the best yeah. way to go and put it. And, and so, like I said, it is oh, coming. Oh, sorry. Ahead. I was going to say really quick. And it's coming from DreamWorks where they have been like making like these really experimental movies with the bad guys, Puss in Boots. And I'm sure like uh, Ruby Gilman would also be experimental in a way. But I'm definitely liking what DreamWorks has been doing lately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get what you mean. So with that said, it is now time I go onto the chat wall And I would like to ask you all, what did you think of the idea of Orion and the Dark? Are you guys anticipated to see this one? Do you feel like this movie should be released in theaters instead of Netflix? I would like to know your thoughts on this. Let me know what you think. Uh, Let's see. 
Uh, I gotta say this movie could have potential. Personally, while I haven't read the book, I think this movie could end up becoming really charming and enjoyable. As for the idea of this going on Netflix, I could see why Netflix would do this given their deal with Netflix with putting different shows on there, so I get why they are doing it in the long run. Alright, so not a fan of the character design for Orion, but it does sound like a really cute animated film. I feel like in some way this might create some uh, some sort of rivalry with fans of Me and My Shadow. Like, it's a stretch to say that it's because of the latter is a cancelled movie with a different plot, but there is some sort of similarity to a degree. A normal male human who is dragged by a strange dark person uh, personified concept, and there are 2D elements uh, to the other world. Yeah, it's a very loose connection. And I mean, yeah, I would say like it's not 100% or like I wouldn't say entirely, but it's like I could see how there is a little bit of a comparison where like you got this kid and you got this big shadowy figure like, OK, I kind of get it. Like I do see a little bit of comparisons. I do see why some people would think me and my shadow with this, but I wouldn't say completely. Yeah, uh, let's see. I mean, or I would I would say like there's not enough to even cause like drama or whatever. <laughs> oh no. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, DreamWorks sheds new light on 2024 movie Orion and the Dark. Looks very interesting. DreamWorks has been on a roll ever since the bad guys, with the exception of Trolls Three, uh, coming uh, of course. But I am definitely excited for whatever Pixar and DreamWorks has to offer, and definitely seeing. Uh, what they do with this one. All right. Uh, let's see. I don't have much to say to this, but uh, I hope that in the future, uh, uh, DreamWorks, when they release their movies for both cinema and our streaming, I look forward to seeing Orion, and it's a nice way to showcase your insecurities in your imagination and someone to talk to as far as what I've read. All right. Uh, at the surface level, Orion does sound like a rather cute movie, but that's really all there is to it. And that might be the reason why DreamWorks wants to have this on Netflix instead of theaters, as they feel less confident about this compared to their other movies, which, when you consider both the bad guys and Puss Boots, is fairly understandable. Yeah, that definitely is true. Uh, you had me at Charlie Kaufman. I'm excited for this already, especially since I'm a fan of DreamWorks. I'm curious how this goes, do given the internet's uh, hypocritical stance on original movies. Eh, yeah, I get what you mean. But I think at this point, we're going to go and take one more break. And when we do come back, oh boy, what we are going to talk about is one of the most discussed moments at the Annecy Film Festival, but not necessarily a good way because we're going to be highlighting what is possibly its most controversial moment. And now, folks, it is time that we are going to go and cap this off with... The Grand Finale! And like I said before, what we are going to be get going into is going to be the most controversial moment at the Annecy Film Festival. Logan, just out of curiosity, did, like... Were you familiar with the backlash, with the whole controversy beforehand? I am definitely aware of it. I seen the Rebel Taxi P a video about it. I actually watched that twice just to get a better understanding about the whole thing. But I am definitely well aware about the whole situation. And we'll talk more once you uh, ex elaborate <laughs> about uh, the situation yeah. or the news. Of course. Now, the subject uh, that we have for you today, let's get right into it. Let's get into the drama. Let's go and discuss about Primos. Now, in case you haven't heard, uh, Disney has officially announced a whole bunch of brand new animated shows that they have in store on their channels, including uh, Disney Channel, Disney Junior, and uh, several others. D basically, what they have in store at Disney Television Animation. And one of these is a brand new animated show called Primos. And to give you a bit of a quick summary, just reading you from my source here, on uh, Know Your Meme, uh, it states the description of the uh, of the series. 
Each half hour episode of Primos produced by Disney Television Animation will be comprised of two 11 minute stories featuring Tater, an eccentric 10 year old girl with big dreams and unbeknownst to her, a certain it factor that makes her exceptional. When her 12 cousins, uh, Primos in Spanish, move in for the summer, they help her discover just what it is. Tater's aspirations and larger than life imagination are seen uh, via entries in her super secret diary, which turn her deepest thoughts into grandiose animation sequences. So it was just a simple idea. And on top of that, uh, along with the announcement, they have also released a uh, uh, the intro of what would be for the animated series. So let's just have a quick moment and watch uh, this, uh, th this theme song that they got with Primos. And that was the theme song to Primos. And that was also the one that really just started this whole controversy. In fact, if you do look down to uh, to the YouTube video that has the uh, theme song, it does have, fi have uh, 5,400 likes, but uh, then you also see that it has 108,000 dislikes. So yeah, people were not happy with what they have seen with Oye with uh, Primos. And there have been a variety of reasons as to why they were so upset seeing this uh, theme song, seeing the intro to the series. And the, the main thing that they called out was the fact that uh, this series was apparently racist, especially towards the, uh, Latino community or Hispanic community or however you may call it. Uh, and there were just a variety of reasons as to why people would, would be so upset about it. Uh, this would range, uh, I remember they did have a little bit of a list if I do recall, but, um, Ah, uh, yeah, okay, it's right over here, actually. Uh, number one, it's in terms of the grammar in the song where, there where um, they would keep on repeating Oye Primos, which apparently was not grammatically correct. I guess it was, um, it, it, like, it's supposed, it's supposed to be Oigan Primos, uh, in which Oigan is plural and Oye is singular. Uh, but then there are also other factors as well, including um, the orange skies. Like when you do take a look at uh, what's happening outside, like uh, let's just have a good shot. Like you'll notice that there is a bit of like this or, you know, there's kind of like this orange filter that is going on or, or that the skies are not really blue, that they do have a bit of a more orange tint to it, which nowadays is considered a bit more of a stereotype in terms of depicting Mexico, especially like something that really started with uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, on top of that, they also mentioned the, uh, the names of some of the cousins, uh, which... Um, uh, some of these, like, they do considered offensive. Like, you got Nacho going on. You got Nachito. You got uh, uh, Gordita, which is uh, which translates to fat. And it's apparently the name of one of the skinnier characters. So they wanted to be ironic. And um, I, I think there's also another one uh, that they got offended with, uh, which is, um, I, I think, Coquita uh, that, that they mentioned. Like, the youngest one, like, over here. Yeah, Coquita. Uh, like a, a lot of people did get offended over that one because Coquita, uh, Coquita can be a uh, slang term for uh, cooch. So uh, I won't go into more details on that. Uh, but there's also the place where they do live in, uh, in which they call it um, uh, Teremoto. Yeah, they they call it Teremoto Heights, 
which in Spanish that translates into earthquake. And um, the, uh, earthquakes, just like in Los Angeles, uh, they can be considered very serious problems in Mexico where there can be some casualties whenever they would go and occur. Uh, that and also, are there any other uh, things that they would say? Uh, but, you know, there are other factors as well that they would look into, like some small details that they would consider it to be highly offensive. But yeah, like now it's pretty much a, a major situation where the La uh, the Latino community or the Hispanic community are just massively offended by all the different factors that's going on with this Disney show. And Disney right now is just facing a lot of uh, massive backlash. But I will say as well that there are some things uh, in terms of backlash that are very inaccurate as well. Uh, there has been some accusations where some people say that uh, that the cat that the crew of Primos is like an all white team that's just making it uh, like you see this picture over here. But it turns out this isn't actually true. This is actually just a picture from Annecy where there was the panel of the um, where there was the panel of Disney television animation. And you'll notice one person who is in this picture and is not part of the team has no relation to Primo's whatsoever, which is Dan Povenmire. So that was a little bit of, a, an, of an inaccurate portrayal. In fact, the actual creator of the, um, uh, the the actual creator of the show is actually a Mexican American herself by the name of uh, Natasha Klein. So that's where we are right now. It's just this entire controversy and this entire mess that is going on with Primos, especially when you got some of the creators trying to defend it, and then like you got some people really rallying up to go and attack it. And uh, uh, and by the way, before we go into our thoughts on this entire situation. I would like to go and highlight that, yes, we are aware that we are two white dudes discussing about an issue that is uh, more connected to the Latino and Hispanic community, and that our opinions on this entire situation will not hold as much weight as anyone who is actually Latino or Hispanic. So I just want to put out that disclaimer right over here that while we are going to be holding we are going to be expressing our opinions on the matter um like just take it with a grain of salt and that our opinion over here is not necessarily as important as the culture that primos is trying to go and represent so uh, logan just out of curiosity what are your thoughts on this entire matter research is your friend that's, I mean, if you're going to do something like this, you definitely need to put in the research into it. I mean, granted, yeah, the creator is Mexican-American, but I feel like that's just, I, I'm trying to think of the way the best describe it. Like, yeah, she, she, she might have like some input of like her, the whole reason why she made the show in the beginning with because it's based on her like real life experience growing up with her family. I do get that aspect and I may not relate to being like, be able to live with a huge family like that. But I feel like if you're going to go into depth, especially with like the culture and all that stuff, you definitely need to put in like the research and know like your heritage and all that stuff or saying what you need to know that you that's going to be correct. Because otherwise, if you don't put in like the research and like the backstory or like the, the culture and all that stuff, then, yeah, you are going to get like that backlash. And yeah, talk about a big oof right there, because there's like a lot that's what you the best, yeah, the way you describe everything, yeah, that's like a lot of take in. And that, keep in mind, this is just a teaser we're watching, the intro. I couldn't imagine mm -hmm. what the whole show is going to be like. Like, uh, I mean, I'm sure like... Yeah, allegedly, uh, I did hear that uh, the pilot has been leaked. So, like, there is a way that oh. we could go and watch it. But I, I don't know. I haven't seen it myself, and I don't know what the reactions are, but... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, but I know that this whole situation, like just bringing it up as well, like can be something that would like get into trouble. Yeah. And even then, like, I, like I said, I know she's Mexican American, but it would have hurt to have like more people of that culture to be like involved with the project. Even they're like consulting it, like make sure you're like, hey, don't say this. Make sure you do that. Like you need to have those people that fact check that everything that they get their approval in order to like go ahead and like put those elements within that show. 
because I feel like, yeah, it's really hard to say because I'm sure they have some people involved that know what they're talking about. But at the same time, it's really hard to say for my end because, like you say, like I'm white, so I don't want to like, say anything that could be like a negative. But it's just really like tough because here's the thing. I'm currently in the process of working on like my passion project and the main care. And I know for the fact that my main characters are white and I'm basically writing what I know that will feel right. That would feel right for those characters. Like I, it's going to hard for me. Like if I want to insert like a character from like a different race, yeah, I'll include them, but I'll, it's going to be tricky to know like how I'm going to like execute like their dialogue per se. Like I'll write for them what I'll write what for anybody else. Really? Like just like a normal per- normal person, or y- you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's so hard. Yeah, so it's tricky. I totally get that. It's very tricky, and it's like you gotta know what you're doing because you can't just like go ahead and like go into it knowing that oh, people are gonna like approve of this. And it's hard to say. And I totally get like the backlash. And this show is definitely receiving a lot of backlash and mm-hmm. it's really tricky. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's very, it's all over the place. It's a mess basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean like it's so much so of a mess that you, like, if you're going to bring this up, you can't just talk, you know, you, you can't just go and make one quick post about it and that's it. Because, like, there are some people that I've seen that seriously got in trouble for that. And one great example is uh, Phil Lord. And yes, I do mean that Phil Lord. I remember he posted on Twitter, like, he was saying, like, oh, I can't wait to watch Primos. Can't wait to see this Latin representation. And, like, a lot of people are just handing him just major oofs. Like, they were all saying, it was uh... like, Phil, I love you, but come on, man. So, yeah, it's like, it's something that if you're not careful, you're going to end up in the cross fires and you will get hit and one thing that i'm just gonna say and i'll get this out of the way is that the one defense i will give to the people making the show i'm sure that they don't have any bad intentions like i'm sure that what they wanted to do like they wanted to create something that is fun and something that represents their culture because especially like this is uh the create you know this is like uh, based a bit on the life of what the creator went through so like kind of like highlighting that um uh, you know that part of the hispanic aspect you know to you know to go and show something and like give out that representation to Mexican American kids or to the Hispanic and Latino community. However, I do completely understand why there is backlash in the first place, especially with the fact that you cannot just say, you know, like Latino community or the Hispanic community. I know I've done that a few times, like right here. But um, the thing is, you can't just say that because even amongst Latinos and Hispanics, they are very much diverse. Like there are so many different groups that have their own different cultures. And uh, if you're just going to represent that in one way, then honestly, some people may have problems in another. Like if you're if you're going to shoot for like the entire one, it may not necessarily be the best idea because like you you have to really go into specifics well like which ones are you really going to go and represent you know it's kind of like saying encanto is a is a great hispanic representation but you can't really say that because what encanto highlights is colombian representation and in he in um in Primos, it looks like it wants to focus specifically on Mexican American, like Mexicans who live in the U.S., like uh, who live in like the southern area, like in or or, or specifically with what they are presenting with uh, Primos, like they want to go and highlight um, Los Angeles, like that area. So from there, like kind of, yeah, I get it. And maybe there are like, and I've seen some defenses where people do say like, they do understand like the, the, the broken grammar that is within, um, that, that is within like the, the theme song and stuff like that. And they're like, and I understand if some people could say like, maybe some of the complaints, like they could be just minor issues that Disney could go and like later fix because technically the show is not out yet. They can go and like make some significant updates to make sure that 
it's not as offensive as it is right now, but I do understand it that I do understand that what they are seeing here does not represent them well. And it feels like something in which they want to go and try to satisfy a specific group in the same way that uh, Disney has done so far. Like, and, and that's like probably one of the most tragic things about this entire controversy is that Disney, that, that Disney television is messing up something that, they really want to champion in because like they've done so well with the past representations, like with the, the black community with, um, with the loud house. And especially nowadays with louder and prouder. Uh, and then you got the owl house that has that LGBTQ plus representation in which the community absolutely adores. Uh, but then when they try to go and adopt the, uh, Latino, uh, Latino or Hispanic representation, like they're already really fumbling up and not to mention, Mentioned that even when you look outside of all the different controversies, even if you can look beyond that, some people are saying that it's not necessarily that interesting of a show where on the surface, it really does look like Disney is trying to copy uh, the Casa Grandes from Nickelodeon and even the plot line itself of like the main girl trying to find uh, her way of like, oh, what makes me so special? And she's getting the help from her cousins in order to get in order to go and get that. And not to mention, with the look of the main character as well, you know, it looks like they're trying to copy a little bit of Encanto. Like, there's a there's a lot of vibes that are very similar to what they are doing with Encanto as well. So, there is... The, so, already in terms of the concept, that it's not that appealing. And already, it, it, Primo already feels like uh, a, a bit of a sinking ship. Either Disney has to go and make some very significant changes to the, uh, to the program, or else they're just going to have to keep dealing with this PR nightmare that, that, they're, that the way that they are presenting the La Latino or Hispanic community it's just uh you know they're they're they are not on disney's side i i think it is safe to say on that and also i just want to go and state that um i did also watch the rebel taxi video and i think it's a fantastic video that i think um pan pizza has done a way better job than either of us to go and fully describe this entire controversy especially from his perspective since he does have uh mexican roots so in that regard, I just feel like with this entire situation, again, I do understand the perspective of the creators that they want to make a nice show and that, you know, there's no foul play that is being made here that, you know, they want to make something nice, something fun, something that represents their community and especially that represents the creator's uh, culture. But then again, I do understand where the complaints are coming from, that I do understand why it has all these backlash and um, how this can be perceived as racist. It's like, yeah, it's a, a lot of it just seems like, uh, un, you know, details that you can look past. But when you do look at it and you do hear the reasons why people are upset, it's like... Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Now, granted, I will state that not everyone is offended because uh, I remember there was a fan of mine who did actually message me on Patreon recently. Uh, I don't have time to like fully read it all out, but um, he did mention that he is a Mexican-American and that he's not really that offended and felt like the controversy is like a bit overblown as well. So I understand that there's, a, there's like so many different reactions to what is going on with the Primo's controversy but still like it does feel like something that is a bit of a sensitive subject and honestly it's it's tough to really know like if you really can pick sides in this matter because again like i could see from the creator's perspective that she wants to make something nice and something that represents her culture but i understand the backlash from it where the representation of that culture is pretty messed up and that you you are you know honestly i agree with you logan it is something that requires research that honestly you got to look beyond from your little personal bubble and see like how other Mexican Americans are living because otherwise, yeah, you kind of have a bit of a messed up image right there. <laughs> exactly. And like I said, I'm sure there's good intentions well made for this uh, series. Um, before I continue, did they say the, the release date for this show or not yet? 
Honestly, I'm not sure. I think it, it might be for the fall, but uh Chadwall, if you do if you do know if there is an official release date, I'm uh honestly I don't know. Like I tried looking it up a bit and I don't think they have said. If I let me just double check on the uh Primos uh description. N none of them even said oh apparently uh oh already I already got some uh word. Uh some people are saying apparently October is gonna be the release date of this. Okay, yeah, no, mm. some people... Okay, more people are saying October, so... Yeah, it is going to be an October release date. I was going to say, if they didn't set a release date, I think it's for the, I think they'll do them a favor, because I feel like that's going to be the case, like... I'm not sure if they're going to take, like, the Sonic route, where they're going to, like, delay the project in order to, like, fix up a few things. Mm -hmm. But I feel like in this case, I feel like they should take that into consideration. Or at least look at the episode they got completed so far... I'm sure it's kind of too late for those, but I'm sure like for the upcoming episodes that are still in the production, I'm sure they got to take a look hard at this and be like, yeah, we got to definitely make some changes. Or if, the, if they have like episodes completed, they should consider like we rework a few things or to make it more mm -hmm. acceptable because, yeah, I feel like if they want this series to continue going forward. Changes are bound to be made. Yeah, I feel. Yeah, I, I think I do agree with you that they need to go and make some changes because otherwise they're going to get into some serious trouble. I think it's safe to say that what we are seeing with Primos right now is going to be completely different to what is going to actually be released that they are that Disney is in kind of like a, an emergency situation that they got to go and make those updates. Otherwise they won't have a show and even, and like chances are, Maybe a delay would be required, like to keep this until 2024 so that things can get a little bit better, that they can have a proper reintroduction. Yeah. And also, it wouldn't hurt to have like test audience. I mean, I'm not sure if they have like test audience when they showcase like some of the episodes, but if they, if that was the case, then they did it like a poor job on that aspect. Like, yeah. so it's, yeah, so I say from my perspective, or actually really quick to get my thoughts on the show itself, I'm with you there. Like, it doesn't seem like that. I mean, it seems like this might be like a decent to an okay-ish show. Like I, I mentioned to you before, that it definitely does give out like the Loud House vibes where it has like so many like main characters. And I feel like the main character is kind of like similar to Lincoln and Ronnie Ann in a little sense of like how they're portrayed. But... Yeah, from my perspective, I mean, the show seems okay, but when it comes like to controversies, yeah, I feel like, like I said, a lot of work needs to be changed in order to like, or, because if they don't make those changes, then they go ahead and release it as it is. Yeah, I don't think this show's going to last. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we will have to wait and see, but... Yeah, this controversy is just, uh, yeesh. It's a, it's a mess, I think it's safe to say. Now... Before we go, uh, let's go and have a quick word from the chat wall. And I would like to know what you all think about the entire controversy. Uh, because uh, honestly, I'm sure there may be some things you want to say. And especially if you are a Latino or if you are a Hispanic or a Mexican-American or anything like that. I would love to know your thoughts as well. Uh, let's see. Controversy and the voice actor statement beside, uh, this show looks rather run of the mill. There's good intentions, but it also just seems like Disney's answer to the Loud House and Casa Grandes. Uh, it's also interesting to see how Disney is getting backlash over doing, uh, poor Hispanic representation with, uh, Kira, uh, Kizazi Moto Generation Fire looks like good African representation. Ah, yeah, that Disney Plus thing. Uh, po probably because the latter actually felt like Disney gave more creative control for African talents, uh, and there's, uh, some cultural consultants. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's what they should have had. Some actual cultural consultants. Exactly. Uh, that's what I'm, yeah. Yeah, this whole Primo situation really shows how distrustful and disgusting the cartoon community in both Twitter and other sites are. As for the show itself, I actually do relate to the creator so much since I actually was raised with a Spanish-speaking family, and my Spanish is absolutely terrible. I mispronounce words in Spanish. I'm also from Southern California as well, and we are also artists. I'll be checking it out because I'm actually interested in showing some support to my Mexican community. Uh, as a native Puerto Rican, I definitely cannot speak for any Mexican people out there, but as a Hispanic individual, this entire thing could have and should have been avoided had they look up 
uh, at this from the perspective of an actual Hispanic community and not just what they grew up with. Not all Hispanic people are the same. Exa exactly. Like, the, the thing is with Latinos and Hispanics, they're very diverse. It's like, you got to ask, oh, which one? <sighs> Let's see. This situation is very overhated. I'm Mexican. I've never experienced the culture of Mexican-American, but the fact that they're doing it based on the creator's life is pretty cool. I just think it's a good idea, but w with bad execution. And I feel bad for uh, from Mexico and other countries are overhating this, but uh, I'm glad anima animators and creators are rooting for this show. I just hope they fix what didn't work and creators deal more with the response. I just hope this does well. Yeah, hopefully it'll be solved soon. Uh, this whole story just feels like it's going all over the place with how much people have problems with the show, with either the incorrect spelling, the representation, the names, and much more. Not to mention with how rather hostile the crew has been with their response, with uh, which it only adds fuel to the fire. After this whole mess, I imagine Disney will focus a lot more on testing with their shows. Yeah, true. I think I'll read uh, one more comment uh, before we go. Honestly, I completely understand a lot of the backlash of the show. While I don't think the show is a bad idea, I just think Disney didn't think this through, especially with how the Mexicans feel uh, or how they can feel offended and how it can be racist. So overall, it is a mess. Although, to be fair, I don't think this is the most racist thing that Disney has done compared to the natives in Peter Pan. That is tame in comparison. Yeah, that is definitely true. And with that said, that should do it for this episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast. Logan, thank you so much for joining me on this. And before we go, um, if people really are interested in what you do or more of what you have to say, where can they follow you on social media? Well, there's currently two different places you can look me up at. You can find me, if you want me personally, you can find me under 2 LDM under Twitter. Uh, mainly Twitter, because I do have like other accounts under that name, but I don't really use them as much. So for 2 LDM, I recommend using my Twitter handle. But I also got a different account that I'm in the process of like working on like an up top, upcoming uh, passion project that I'm currently working on, which is called Amazement Park which I know the last time I was here, I did showcase a teaser trailer for it. Mm -hmm. And so if you're curious to know about more about that project, you can follow that under Amazement Park under through Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And I think that's it for now. And uh, last week I did upload a, a clip from the upcoming pilot Ooh. pilot I'm working on. So if you're curious about what that what I have in stores on that, you can check it out through there. If you're not familiar with what that is, a quick summary. Um, I'm currently working on a project, a passion project that is like basically it's going to be mainly a satire of the theme park experience of what it's like to actually go to the theme parks, where it'd be like dealing with like the long wait times, the hot weather, some of the rude customers, just any like bad experience you could experience at a theme park. While they can't, but while they are fun, and I'm a huge fan of them, there are some issues that I do have a problem with, especially when it comes to like how certain people act towards like the theme park experience but more on that later but yeah if you're interested to know more about that like i said follow uh, Masement park through twitter instagram facebook and um expect more updates down the road no official date on when that pilot's going to be done i'm still working hard on it but you'll expect more updates down the road all right, sounds good. And if you are interested in more Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast, then don't forget to go and subscribe to me on my Twitch at Animat Live and on the Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget also to follow me on whatever podcast service you're listening to, rather it be on Spotify, Google, Amazon, iTunes, and many, many more. So with all that said and done, I would like to say thank you all so much for listening. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, see you later, dudes. And uh, Logan says bye, too. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs>